everything in America is wild. When my um, husband suggested we move from Detroit, which is, of course, extremely urban, into the uh, mountains of western North Carolina, um, I didn't know I wouldn't have a picnic again for another three years because everything bites. <laughs> there were bears and insects I'd never heard of, snakes. It was terrifying to me. I got angry. As no one warned me how wild this is, and the people around me were used to it. So it seemed to me they were blind and couldn't see how wild everything was. And I, I just started um, kind of writing these little anti-pastorals, and then they grew. I, I wanted to say that negotiating American wilderness is as difficult as negotiating the urban, or at least it was for me. There's the assumption that if you are in nature, right, then suddenly you are one with your soul, at peace with God. I didn't feel anything like that. <laughs> I felt frightened, and I felt um, my smallness, uh, but not in a good way, not in a way that, that restrains and controls um, the overactive ego, right? Um, I felt as if I was slowly being erased. And it took a while to find my footing. Now, the interesting thing is uh, they say, um, at least in those part, that part of the lower Appalachians, that it takes um, five years. And once that happens, you're not going to leave those mountains. So I think we were there about three and a half. But that really was all it took, because as much as I cried the first year and a half, I cried twice as much having to leave those mountains. When I first started writing, I really wrote persona poems. I wrote in the third person. I wrote outside of myself. Um, this time, I really committed to going in um, and getting down the matter of my life. I wanted, so in that way, I wanted some documentation. But poetry is fictive, and memory is slippery. I'm working on a memoir, and I'm very excited about that. Uh, and I'm also constantly writing poetry, so book four is, I want to say it's almost done. I don't know when it's going to be done, but I'm, I'm getting there with it. I let myself go in book three. I felt I've got the craft. I, I know the rules. I know the conventions. I needed something else. I needed something, I needed something to conceptually open up. And I think that happened in Forest Primeval. Now I'm just kind of organically seeing where the work goes and allowing it to be. My journal writing is probably my practice. And I pick it up and put it down in, in uh, spits, you know. Sometimes I'll write in a journal for six months, and then I write nothing. And then I may throw the journal away, or I might write in a journal for a year and decide to keep it. I'm working on a series of essays, um, and the essays are around craft and culture. Um, but those things kind of oil the wheel for me. They keep language always there. Also, I find... I must have and crave writerly conversations. I need to talk to other writers. After 9-11, so many people were writing poetry, were picking up pens and writing. So, of course, poetry is foundational art that's never going to change. It's going to always be a part of cultural life around the world. And as far as reading goes, well, we're not in a period where we have one small group of people who are determined to be our poets and everyone reads them. So it seems as if at one time there were more readers. But really, we have more readers now. It's just that instead of reaching an audience of 200,000 with a book. I might reach an audience of 2,000, but then there are 1,999 other poets also reaching audiences of 2,000. And um, through slam, through spoken word, and many of those young poets will then pick up text 
move into um, the writing of it. So, uh, yes, there's more poetry being read now than ever before. I simply did not know that my work was being read as widely as it was. And so it, it brought things to my attention. Um, and that's a healing thing. It's a wonderful thing. And of course, I wouldn't have stopped writing. I, I write compulsively. I'm a writer's writer. I'm going to write for as long as I'm able to write, no matter what happens, publications, awards aside. I have to do this. There are many, many ways for a black woman to be erased. There are many, many ways for a woman to be erased. There are many, many ways for someone who is not wealthy to be erased. Again, it's a healing thing, an affirming thing. And um, I'm very, very appreciative of it. <laughs>